let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be making the mini Magdalena um, wristlet from Aura Rosa Patterns. This little thing is so adorable. Um, I added piping and it looks okay and then I added this um, foam and quilted this main panel to make it a little fun and again it turned out okay. The foam added a little too much thickness um, and made it less of a circle and more of a circle. So circles are hard anyway, but this side looks better. Um, as far as interfacing, I just used Decaville Heavy in the main panels and then a layer of Decaville Light as suggested in the pattern there. I lined it with the printed waterproof canvas. It's a little bit thicker than the Otter Text, um, but it is waterproof. Um, I used the waterproof canvas for the binding, which again added a little bit more structure along here, so it's kind of hard with the piping. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Be sure to check out the pattern down below and don't forget to subscribe. Just to show you how quick this is to cut out, this was probably about 20 minutes. Um, cut out the exterior, the lining, the Decaville heavy, and the Decaville light for the gusset. And that's pretty much it. Also super minimal hardware. So this is a great scrap buster um, and just super quick and fun. All right, so the only hardware we really need is a half inch snap hook, half inch deering, zipper and zipper pull. I am adding piping for fun. Um, it definitely isn't required. What I'm using is the Wright's prepackaged um, maxi piping. That's what they call it. I am using um, one of the vinyls I saw on my website. It has a microfiber backing. So it does have a bit of a drag to it when you are sewing, but just try not to put too much pressure down if you can. Um, and then I'm using a printed waterproof canvas for my lining fabric, also my binding. Um, and then for my lining, I have not cut out perfect circles because you're gonna baste them together anyway. So I figured why waste time cutting them out perfectly when I could just cut them out of scraps really quick. Um, so I'm gonna do another unnecessary step and I'm gonna quilt my vinyl really quick. Um, so I'm just going to kind of trace out a little flower, really loose. And then whatever you're tracing out, just know it may not look like that in the end. Um, just because that's the nature of it. It almost doesn't feel like there's enough surface area to add a second one, so I think I'll just continue on with these like really loose waves. All right. So I've got my stitch length set to a 4.5. And I'm gonna try to keep my head out of the way. The last time I filmed the above the head view, um, I kept getting my head in there, so I'm sorry. I wanna start off the fabric so that my threads are locked in somewhere, essentially. And then I'm just gonna kind of go around. So the pen I used is a silver marking pen. Um, they're uh, originally from Tandy Leather, um, but it's a, it's almost like a chalk marker, um, but it is an ink. So if you leave it on for too long, it can stain. So just be mindful of that. Although someone messaged me and let me know that they used a magic eraser to remove their marks off of vinyl. It does not come off of fabric, at least not that I have discovered. So just be careful when you're using it. Always do a test mark with any marking pen. What works on one may not work on another. So just, again, be, be mindful. And then any fingers 
that touch that silver will smudge it. So that's why I'm just going super slow and why I understand that it may not look the same. I'm just making this for me, so I'm not super worried about it. I'm just having fun. And then if you have to go off of the fabric, or I should say if you have to stop quilting, make sure you're doing it off the edge of your fabric so that those threads don't come loose and don't show later on. Sorry, okay. I just had to see if it's going in the right direction. And this may not work well with all vinyl types, so just test before you start. And then as I'm going around, I'm also trying to baste the foam fully as well. All right, so here's a new section. Keep in mind your seam allowances too. Like some of these lines I may not be able to see once the bag is complete. So it's like, why worry about it? especially like over here. Okay, so I'm just missing one little area, but that's okay. I'm gonna come back to it. Just add a second little line of swoopies. And then finish basting. Okay. And see all of my threads start and stop on the edge of this piece here. If you're gonna do a lot of quilting on your piece and you don't want it to shrink, definitely do this first on a larger piece Usually you wanna cut it like a quarter of an inch bigger around all the sides, just to verify that it doesn't shrink as you're quilting. Um, but I have done this on a couple of other pieces and I don't notice any shrinking with this vinyl when I'm quilting it this way. Um, if I were to do a bunch of little squares, it's very possible it could shrink. So just be mindful and test it, but I, I just love the way it feels when it's done. Um, so really quick, I'm gonna add some oil, some sewing machine oil, and wipe away um, with a scrap piece of fabric or my hand, I'm not really worried about it. Um, but I saw Alexis actually do this in her Catalina pattern that it wiped away all of that extra silver marking pen so I thought it was awesome and then the shine that it gives us is so cool oh I wasn't talking to you so yeah that is the quilting step I'm gonna go ahead and fuse my Decaville heavy now to the back side of this piece all right so now it's time to add the piping again these steps are totally optional so if you're not wanting to add these just skip ahead um, I'm going to be using double-sided tape to help hold the piping into place. And what I'm going to be doing is basically just taping along the outside edge of my Decaville Heavy. So I'm feeling with my finger, and you could even mark this out if you wanted. I believe it's like a three-eighths of an inch in from the edges. So that's not a perfect circle, but I can lay the piping to be a more perfect circle. So really quick, I'm gonna snip centers. I'm 
could even do this before you add your Decaville Heavy. If you don't have Decaville Heavy, you could probably use two layers of Decaville Light. I think that could work just as well. I haven't tried this with the foam before, but if you're using a domestic machine, you'll want to try to cut the foam out of the seam allowance if you're doing something similar. I'm so sorry for that noise. It's my husband's 3D printer, if you're like hearing it and annoyed. <laughs> Better than my air conditioning running though, huh? Yeah, maybe. All right, there's that. I'll go ahead and add. It's harder to feel the Decaville heavy through this side, so I'm just gonna eyeball it as best as I can. Now, since this piping is so thin, it's not going to be hard to sew through, so I don't need to worry about making a continuous loop of piping. However, it would look really nice if I did, um, especially if you're making your own piping. That's a lot easier to do. But what I'm gonna do is start to peel off my double-sided tape. I'm gonna find one of my center marks and I'm gonna lay this face down, coming in from that edge, and then make a little angle. And then continue to tape this around the outside edge. Um, I cut about 17 inches for my piping. I hope it's enough. It looks like just enough. Yeah, okay, good. And then you want it to kind of overlap like that. If you really, really want to, you can cut your seams open there, fold, and like create a perfect loop. But basically what you would do is cut out the piping that's in here and cut the piping there and then fold this over to create a um, folded seam so there's no raw edge and then just cover your piping but it's it's really not that serious so i'm not going to be doing that but i am going to base this into place along both edges because you can see here it's starting to lift and we don't want that when we're sewing everything together so i'm going to go about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the piping. This is gonna be our follow line when we add the gusset. Okay, so I'm getting back to where I started and then I'm just gonna jump over and base that loose edge of the piping down. And then you can cut away the excess piping that is adding too much bulk right here. Voila. And then you can see I got really close to the Decaville Heavy. And the Decaville Heavy is what's going to give this bag that like perfect shape. And then this little bit of piping is going to stick through. It's going to be super cute. I generally like a piping that's a little bit thicker, but I don't have any cotton piping that I really liked. Um, and I just can't have anything super thick on this. All right. So I kind of want this to be up towards the top and I want where my piping starts to be kind of at the bottom. So I'm just looking for that center mark and laying that piping down, folding that edge and continuing on with the taping down. I 
I made one the other night trying to add like a cute ruffle, um, but it just didn't work out. So today I was like, I'll just do the quilting and the piping. However, you don't need to do anything to make this harder than it already is. Sewing a circle already isn't super easy, so nothing wrong with making it as it was intended. I just wanted to have a little extra fun with it. Okay. And now I can base on my lining fabric. So if you are adding any kind of slip pocket, etc., you absolutely can. I'm not going to. I don't think it's really written in the instructions that you should or shouldn't. So that's totally up to you. And then I'm going to trim off my excess threads and that extra fabric. I'm not cutting past my exterior fabric. I'm just cutting the lining to meet the size. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. So I've got my zipper pull attached. I've got my zipper ironed. If you've got any, well, I'm gonna iron it again. If you've got any weird waving on your zipper and your zipper is not made of plastic, this one here is a nylon, then it is able to be ironed and I do recommend it. Okay, so just use a good amount of steam while you're ironing and you should be good to go. So I've got my zipper panel my gusset oh my goodness i didn't cut out my zipper panel lining now i've got that done i'm gonna make my little strap connector here this is one inch wide by three inches long so i'm just gonna fold the long raw edges in towards the center and top stitch and I find this looks best on the opposite side that your zipper pull is however you can also if you're using a big enough zipper pull um, like these pop tab ones here that I sell on my website they are big enough to hold a wristlet strap so you could even omit this step if you're doing that oops don't use your basting stitch Set that aside. I'm gonna grab my double-sided tape for my zipper panel pieces. I'm just using eighth inch wide. If your pattern is directional and you want your zipper to be aligned in the center, make sure that your pattern, so let's say if I were using this for the exterior, I would want it to be so that the pattern is continuous. So I would add my tape here And then I would add my tape here. So that way the zipper goes in the center of those on the finished product. So you see like that. 
that's just my lining, so I'm not super worried about it, but I thought I would note if you are worried about it, there is a way to ensure that you add it to the correct side. I always like to make sure that I have some overhang on my zipper so that it doesn't fray over time and come out of the seam and so that I don't have to move my zipper pull out of the way as I'm sewing. It's just out of the way. Okay, then I'm gonna press this open. and top stitch on my exterior and through the lining. Make sure I'm like pulling and pushing everything to lay correctly. Okay, I'm gonna add my lining Line that up. That is the one thing about having a zipper that's longer is that you just have to take a little extra care to make sure that your pieces line up correctly. And then so I don't forget, I'm going to lay this in place now and base that down. Okay. Now we're ready to add the exterior gusset. <clears throat> and lining gusset. So I'm gonna lay my lining in place and stitch that down at about an eighth of an inch, just so nothing shifts on me. And then I'm gonna move my zipper pull in. And line that up. Move your zipper pull out of the way. Based. And now our exterior <clears throat> will lay on top of all of those layers with the exterior facing right sides together. And I'm sewing just next to that stabilizer. And then I can trim my excess zipper tape away and all those extra threads. And I'm gonna cut through my exterior fabric so that that seam isn't so bulky. When we flip it down, I'm only top stitching through the exterior fabric and that seam. My lining is still out of the way. So you can see it lays nice and flat. So I'll repeat that on this side. Make sure that your D-ring is out of the way. Clip that in place. Make sure all of your extra fabric is out of the way. <clears throat> I'm gonna sew as close to that stabilizer as possible without sewing through my hardware, of course. And 
And then I'm gonna trim through the extra fabric, the exterior. I'm leaving my D-ring connector long. I'm gonna lay this flat and I can get closer when I fold it down. I can fold it down straight and top stitch over that. So I may not have been able to get as close as possible to the hardware, the direction I was going initially, but I can make up for it when I'm top stitching. Now we're gonna put the lining inside. I'm folding everything flat. I guess technically you could use like a double-sided tape here if you wanted, but I'm going to baste all of these layers together. And the reason I don't sew through the lining up here is so that as I'm trying to lay the lining gusset in place, I've got wiggle room. So I clip in the center, I roll it to one side, clip it down, and then I roll it to the other side and clip it down. So if anything is a little bit off, I can add the tiniest little fold up here to make sure things lay flat. So I'm gonna start on one side, I'm gonna increase my stitch length to probably a six, six and a half, just to make it go really fast. And just baste all the layers together. If there's any unevenness in your zipper panel and the bottom gusset, you can use this time to baste them all together and then trim away any excess. So like right here, it's over by just a little bit, but I can just trim that away so that it's all one even size. And then I'm gonna fold in half, lining up my gusset pieces like that. And I'm gonna snip out my center marks. And you can do this as a quadrant if you'd prefer. So that's when you would find those first, and then you'd clip those together to find the other center. But I'm not super worried about it. I think everything will line up together nicely. I'm gonna switch to the thicker clips and grab double-sided tape. All right, I'm gonna grab my 3 8 inch wide double-sided tape. You could also use staples, but I'm gonna tape around the outer edge of the circle. You could use eighth inch wide tape as well, but this is just gonna hold it a lot stronger. Especially since we're sewing in such a small circle, we wanna get as close as possible. All right, let's start with this side. I'm gonna check my bobbin before I start this because, oh yeah, it's been sounding empty. Why 
might have made it, but I'd rather not risk it when I've got a full bobbin just sitting here. <clears throat> All right, so I already know where the bottom of this circle is because that's where I've added this piping. So that's where I want the bottom of my gusset to go. So I'm going to refine that little center snip and stick this into place and clip. And if you need to, you can add little snips around your gusset to help clip within the circle. Oh, it should be okay. So I'm gonna clip just a small section to start, and then I'm gonna find my top center. And then I'm just gonna work that curve around. Clip around the curve. Yep, there's my snips. Then you just gotta hope you use the right seam allowances for the rest of the back. Make sure your fabrics are edge to edge. I think this is such a cute pattern. I love the idea of using it as like a pacifier bag or um, maybe even just like a little bag for toys, etc. Ooh, look at that, Ooh, look at that. All right, just verify this is the top gusset. There's my bottom. Things are looking pretty centered. So then I'm just gonna sew around the edge in that circle. This might be easier. It's really up to you if you wanna try to smush it flat with your gusset in the center or if you wanna sew it in the circle like this. I don't know which way is better and I think it's pretty much gonna depend on your skill set what you feel comfortable doing. But I do need to kind of feel the edge of my piping. Switch my stitch length back down to like 4.5. And then just keep a consistent seam allowance as you go. Make sure things don't shift. I usually like to use, like I mentioned earlier, oh, you could probably totally see my head, um, a little bit wider Let's just move the camera angle. I usually like to use a little bit thicker of a piping just so I can more easily feel it through the layers. Um, but I just haven't found like the perfect piping. That is one thing that's nice about the Decaville Heavy in this pattern though, is that no matter how unperfect, well, not how unperfect, like if your circle sewing skills aren't super perfect, the Decaville Heavy kind of helps the bag keep its shape. So you can kind of depend on that. 
So there is what that looks like. And it's not bad, but we don't want that. Ugh, that's terrible. So I need to come in a little ways. But you can see how the Decaville Heavy makes it look really good from this angle because that's what's helping it keep its shape. So I'm just gonna flip it back through um, and come in just a little ways. That or when you add your um, pipe or your binding, that will be the way it comes through. I guess another thing you could do is baste along the outer edge and then lay it flat to help you feel through the fabrics better. Maybe we're learning together and that's fine. So yeah, I'm gonna try that. Cause the last time I made this, I added piping and I sewed it this way and I was right up against that piping cause I can feel it better through the layers this way. I'm worried that I'm gonna regret having done this line of stitching, but who knows? Guess we'll find out together. Okay, that's way better. That looks way better. I'm not like right up against it everywhere. There's that little mark there, but it's for me. I'm not gonna look that hard at it. I'm okay. So I am gonna add my binding now. And I love using the printed waterproof canvas for the binding. It is so much thinner than the otter text in a good way so that the binding isn't super difficult. And you want to start that around the bottom. And I've just got a piece of double-sided tape in the center. And I'm just folding it around and wrapping it over the edges. And you can clip as you go. But I love using the double-sided tape with this. Um, it's just another level of hold. A little added security. Um, this is not the double fold bias tape, etc. This is just a one inch wide strip of waterproof canvas. It's about 17 inches wide. Um, I would have cut about 18 just to give myself some extra wiggle room to fold over, etc. But I didn't have that width. So this is what I've got. It's not too bad though. actually like absolutely perfect so there is that and then we're just gonna sew around the side 
and you don't want to come in too far to where you create a whole new seam allowance. You just want to cover where you've already sewn. And as I'm doing this, I like to keep the clip open, but in place. There we go. Um, so I'm holding open the clip and pressing it against the edge, almost like a guide. Like it'll help hold the fabric into place for me. Just so that I know it's pushed right up against the edge. I also love using water or the printed waterproof canvas for my binding because you can't see your stitches as well through it. So if you mess up, you won't see it. So yeah, you can see my original stitch line. Again, I'm not super worried about it. And that waterproof canvas binding gives it another layer of structure. So yeah, it's not a perfect circle. It's like a circle but it's cute. Now we're gonna move on to the hard part. <laughs> Which is attaching my quilted piece, especially since I really cannot feel the binding through the foam. Okay. So here is my bottom. So I want to start by clipping there. You definitely, you just want to keep that consistent. And I think I'm gonna do what I had mentioned earlier, which is kind of based along the edge in a circle, really close to the edge, and then squish it down. To sew the rest. Got my top clipped into place. I'm gonna line up the other edges. Feels good. Feels like it's in place. And then I'm going to baste along the outer edge, keeping everything in place. Then I'm going to fold in and smoosh so that I can get as close to that piping as possible. 
and I can feel the piping through the top here. I hope, anyway. Probably should have put the piping a little closer in, maybe? I don't know. So I'm just taking a few inches at a time to flatten out the gusset. Probably should make sure this is unzipped. Luckily you can just drag your finger across your zipper to bring it in. It's gonna be so pretty when it's done though. I hope. I think I could have just done the quilting and it would be fine. But no, I had to add piping. It's such a small circle that like this is fine and like it doesn't seem like it's too small of a circle to where it's gonna be way too difficult so I think I think she made it a really nice size And then you could turn this out and check it. However, I'm just going to say it is what it is and add my binding. I feel like I've done that to the best of my ability and it is what it is. pattern matching. If you need to trim down your seam allowance, you definitely can, but make sure that you're giving yourself enough to sew the binding to, whether you're using the pre-made double fold or a waterproof canvas or fold over elastic, you could also do that. Okay, yeah, give yourself at least 17 and a half inches of binding, if not 18. to backstitch over where they're connected. I usually try to start there, 
but I didn't. can really hear the 3D printer going now. Okay, wish me luck. And this is where you'd wanna make sure that you have plenty of um, zipper tape within your seam allowance, because if you are adding too much stress there, it could come undone within your seam allowance, and then your zipper pull will pop off. So I always like to make sure that I have at least a quarter of an inch extra. I just wanted to look cute. All right, so I know the back side looks pretty good. It's the front I'm worried about. So you just wanna press up against that seam. Make sure that the binding is sitting the way it should. Cause that will help give the bag a nice shape. It's not bad, but it's not great. And I feel like mine is maybe a little bit smaller than it needs to be because I had to go in for that piping. But there is that shape. Oh, it's so, it's a circle. It's like pretending to be a circle, but it's just not. That side looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So I would say, Maybe don't add quilting and binding because that foam is also giving an added layer of bulk that we didn't plan for. But I think, honestly, I could manipulate this a little bit more just to help it lay flat. I think maybe trimming down my seam allowance by a little bit would have helped. There's what it looks like inside. <clears throat> it's not bad it got better so let's go ahead and make the wristlet strap um <clears throat> i'm not gonna follow the instructions for that like roundy guy i don't have the patience so i'm just gonna lay my double-sided tape on this and make it just a strap and then add a rivet so this makes a half inch wide strap also sell pre-made straps on my website. I feel like I've mentioned my website too many times in this video. I usually try not to do that. So you can see, like, I didn't get close enough to the piping there, but you can't, you can't tell. It's fine. This is just for me. So folding long raw edge to the center on both sides. You could also cut a one inch piece and butt the edges together right in the center so that your strap isn't super thick. And if you don't have a snap hook, you could even just add this through your zipper pull. Like let's say you wanted to make a super quick gift, you don't have time to order anything to make it, and you don't have anything on hand, you could just slide this through your zipper pull and 
the way I would do it is probably I do like a three fold where I fold it up and then down like that. So you could just add that and omit the D-ring altogether, or you could attach it directly to the D-ring too. But I always like to have that little extra to pull on. I don't know. Totally up to you. I'm just gonna attach this here with a rivet, or you could even sew it by hand, like sew it with your machine. All right, and here it is all finished. Front side doesn't look as good as the back, but again, it's it's just a cute little circle wristlet. There's the inside. So it wouldn't hold like a phone or anything like that. Um, but I think it'd be great for a diaper bag to hold little binkies or sanitizing wipes hand sanitizer, etc. a card or two. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you later. Bye.